What's up, everyone? How's it going? I'd just like you all to know that we're in the end game now, and I'm back with another Cubase tutorial where I'll explain snap types. So it's good to be back. My last video actually got blocked by Warner Music Group because I used some of their copywritten music in explaining how to achieve production techniques within Cubase. And that was a little bit disheartening because up until now, companies have said, you used our material, so we're just going to take 100% of the ad revenue, uh, which is also not that cool, but at least the video was allowed to be aired. This last video I made just completely got stricken from the record. It got blocked and banned from YouTube. So that's a bummer. So I'm back. There will be no copywritten music in this video at all, but I will show you a few things about snap types. So let's just jump into Cubase. All right, we're here in the project. I'll just use this vocal track and we'll start um, with grid as the snap type. That's the one that it defaults to. And if you don't have this, you can, um, it's under snap if you right click on your top bar. And so, and then this is whether snap is on or off. And that hotkey is J. Just turning on and off snap sometimes can be very helpful, especially if you're editing audio. Uh, so we'll start with grid with snap on. Now, I don't know if you do this, but you can add a unit um, by holding the alt key and that'll bring up your pencil or you could choose your pencil and add in a unit and it'll add in just like a quarter note here because beat is set. So you have the snap type and you have the grid type. Now, if I delete that and I'll go back to my main tool and I set this to bar, it'll give me a whole bar. Uh, and that's the snap, the grid type. Now I could also set it to use quantize. And if I set the quantize to 1 16th, it'll just give me 1 16th when I add it in here. So as you can see, just one sixteenth note. If I set it to a half note, or it'll give me a half note when I add in a bar here. So that's sort of how this uh, the the grid type works. And then also there's adapt to zoom. I don't use this, but this could be very powerful. If you're zoomed out, you can see there the grid is quarter notes. So it'll just put in quarter notes. But if you zoom in, the grid gets more fidelity. So this is a quarter note. This is a 32nd notes here, 64th notes, six, seven, eight, 30 second notes. Um, so that's how adapt to zoom works. The grid will change uh, depending on how much you're zoomed in. But I typically use bar or beat or use quantize. I don't use the adapt to zoom and we'll just use bar for the sake of this tutorial. So let's go back in and add in, we'll hit alt and add in a bar. Now what grid does is when you move an item, it'll match it to the grid based upon your uh, grid type. So it'll match it to this third bar here, boom. Done and done, it'll match it to this bar. Now if we switch this grid type to beat, It'll match it to the grid, but it'll go to 4.2, 4.3, 4.4. And of course, beat is defined by your time signature. So the beat will be quarter notes uh, because the time signature is 4.4. Now here's a signature track. If I change this to 6.8, whoa, 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 whoa. All of a sudden the beat is defined by Eight, uh, eighth notes because the eighth note is a beat. So you can see there's eight notes in a bar instead of four. So we'll just move this back to four, four. That's what it defaults to. It's just important to know that your time signature will define what Cubase sees as a beat and the default is four, four. But if you're doing something crazy, it'll use that. And that's sort of like use quantize, but just with the beat of record. So if we went to use quantize and we had 16th notes, as you can see, every time we move it, it moves at one 16th note. All right, and that's grid. And grid makes perfect sense. Grid is what I work in most of the time. Oh, let's, let's do a bar here. We'll add in a bar now. The next one we wanna point out is grid relative. So let's take off snap and move this. 
So as you can see, this is like uh, almost a 16th note in front. And this is good so, sort of like if you lead into a bar, like, well, I'm going to tell you a story about this. Bah, 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 bah. And you want that well, and you want to duplicate it later or something. Or, you know, you have a, a voice leading into uh, the beginning of a bar, like it hits the, the turnaround on the end of the four. And you want to sort of loop that. Well, you'll want grid relative. So if it's set to bar uh, on grid, it'll just snap to the fourth bar. Boom. But if we undo that, on grid relative, it'll snap to this position one bar later. So if we start moving this, watch this. Boom. And as you can see, it's the exact same amount of distance from the bar line as it was when it was back here. So that's how grid relative works. It basically takes your event and it doesn't match it to the grid, but it moves it uh, by what you've defined on your grid type. So if we did use quantize, it'll move it a 16th note, even though it's in between 16th notes. So as you can see, and it, and it does it perfectly based upon where it was originally. So that's grid relative, and that one's very useful, especially if you're working with audio. I think in MIDI, you can sort of cheat that stuff a little more, but it's also useful in MIDI from time to time. The next snap type we'll look at is events. And events is what it sounds like. So let me just record in some scratch audio here. Uh, we'll just say, um, this is a test, test one. This is a test, test two. This is a test, test three. Okay, now if we wanted to just isolate the, this, uh, the tests, we can come through here. Um, this is a test, and we'll erase this, test one. Then we'll erase to test two here. Test two. This is a test. Then we'll erase to test three. And with events selected as your snap, these events will snap together. So with our tool, our pointer tool here, we'll move these and you'll see they'll snap perfectly. And all of a sudden we have test one, test two, test three. Okay, now let's look at shuffle. Shuffle is very handy if, uh, if you're doing like dialogue editing and stuff, but it can also be handy in music as well if you just wanna change around parts. So we have one, two, and three. Let's make two, one, and three, two. So test two, test three, test one. So if we want these to be in the right order, test one has to come to the front, test, two has to, uh, test three has to go to the back. So we'll have test one, test two, test three. And so shuffle basically is like events, but it moves the other event to the back. And it's kind of nice to have. You can sort of put this wherever you want it. And uh, so that's pretty self-explanatory and it's a very useful mode to have. The next one we're gonna look at is cursor. And that basically just makes your cursor the sticky part. So it doesn't follow the grid, it doesn't follow events, it just makes the cursor sticky. So if we get close to the cursor, it'll stick. And that's true if we move the cursor forward or back. As you can see, it's just, it's not sticking anywhere, but we get close to the cursor, boom, it'll stick. Boom, it'll stick. Now, the rest of the events are just combinations of those, grid and cursor. That one could be useful, events and cursor or grid events and cursor. And those are the grid types for snapping in Cubase. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe and take care of yourselves, everyone. Peace.